Welcome back, rivals. This is Zonia, and you are in the zone. Today, we're going to be looking at a new market and a beginner video. 1K a day, daily money making. In today's video, I'm going to try and help show you the simplest, fastest way to make 1,000 clints a day in UR. This may not seem like a lot, but believe me, it's more than you think, and it takes very little effort. My goal is to help you not only get 1K a day, but to do it without spending hours of your free time on UR. This way, it's more manageable, there's a better chance of not burning out from playing too much, and you'll be happier with your gains, because you'll feel like you're spending your time efficiently instead of poorly. In fact, I'm going to try and help you do it in just one and a half hours a day. Once again, this video is particularly dedicated to the newer UR players out there who may have stumbled onto my video while looking for how to succeed in UR on YouTube. Welcome. So, let's take a look at an outline of what we'll be talking about today, then the schedule you should follow, the core or basics of this, and then the last 15 minutes that you'll have. So first, let me be upfront. You may not actually be making 1K every day, but you will be making 1K on average every day. The amount will fluctuate from day to day, you can achieve this through several different simple methods. So let's cover each method and check to see what you'll learn on average in each. Oh, and one final note. This is all based on using a computer to access UR's website, not the phone app. Your mileage may vary on the phone application since I don't use it, so sorry. First, here's a schedule that you can follow to help you understand what I'm going to be talking about. Obviously, you do not have to follow this schedule exactly. It's merely meant to be a reference for how to use your time on UR effectively, assuming that you have limited time and want to make the most of your hour and a half. So here, if we have these four hours in a row, you'll notice DT, or daily tournaments, are every other hour. So what you want to do is you want to log on to UR in the last 15 minutes of a DT. And then you're going to stay until 15 minutes into the following DT. Okay, everything we're going to be doing is going to be inside that one and a half hour block. If you come in at a different time, then it's going to be a little bit harder. So for those of you with a very strict time schedule, you may not be able to make quite as much, but you'll still be able to make almost 1k a day. You just might have to put a little bit more effort into it or hope for a little more luck. So first, let's take a look at the core or the basics. The first is the daily login bonus. Very recently, just this last May actually, UR introduced a daily login bonus for PC users. As a result, you are guaranteed 500 plus 400 times 5 plus 300 times 4 plus 200 times 4 plus 300 or 4800 clints a month with a chance to gain an uncommon card, free Leaders Wars entrance tickets, or 1 to 500 more clints in the 8 additional boxes. Even if you have absolutely horrible box luck for the entire month, you're guaranteed at least an average of 154 clints a day. Even better is that you'll get all this simply from logging on and going to the game mode selection screen. You can even miss a few days and still max all this bonus has to offer every month. We've barely started and we're already earning 154 clints a day. Just remember to log in. So as you can see here, I'm on the main page. I haven't logged in yet today, so I'm gonna go to play. Just gotta go to play now. I'm gonna log in. And as soon as it loads, you're gonna have this screen pop up and it's gonna give you some clints for the first 24 days of the month. Today, my daily bonus is worth 400 clints. But as you can see, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven chances to get boxes. Sorry, seven, not eight. And you're gonna be getting a little bit of clints. So this is a total of about 4,800 clints. And then you're gonna get seven chances at boxes as well, which can contain anything from uncommon cards, free leader wars, entrance cards, or tickets, one to 500 more clints, you're also going to be guaranteed to get some uh, experience and some BPs, uh, which are going to level you and your cards. So this is just for logging in. I mean, you can even miss a few days and still max all that this bonus has to offer every month. 
and we've barely even started. We're already earning like 150 clints a day. So just remember to log in every day. If you're not sure where you are, you can go up here next to the home, news and daily rewards, at least until the game switches over to the new site. And then here, the present. And this will show you the daily login rewards and just how far you are and what you've earned. Next up is the daily guild bonus. Additionally, if you are at least rank two in your guild, and your guild has put two points into the daily clints bonus on connection guild bonus, you'll gain another 100 clints per day. This is not announced anywhere, so it's very easy to overlook this bonus, but it's certainly not one that you should forget about. You literally get this bonus as well for nothing other than just logging on. We've only logged into UR and we're already making 250 clints a day. This is why one of the most important things in the core basic section is just logging on to UR every day. So if you go up here, let's look at Legends of America. We are a level 30 guild. We're the maximum level that you can reach right now. Guilds offer these bonuses down here. Okay, I get more daily clints bonus. This is actually on top of what you get for logging in. Just doing this, this is plus 100. That's awesome. Extra 100 clints a day. Next are the DTs or daily tournaments. DTs are an absolutely excellent way to earn the solid base of your daily clints. There are two keys to maximizing the amount of clints you make in your DTs. One is playing in both formats and two is catching the last few minutes of one and the first few minutes of the next. The key to earning 1k a day in one and a half hours is in the timing. Ideally, you want to log into UR during the last 10 to 15 minutes of a DT. You also need to have two pre-prepared dedicated DT decks ready. One for T1 and one for T2. So one deck with 25 or less stars and one with 26 or more. That way, when you log on, you should switch to one of your DT decks. It doesn't matter which first, though. Make sure that your deck doesn't have any negative modifiers, because you want to be able to earn at least one point, even if you lose all of your rounds. After playing your one match, which should take you five minutes at a maximum, probably more like two to three, you should switch your deck to the other format and play one more game. By doing this, you will rank in the tournament for both formats. Did you know that you can play in both formats and get rewards for both? With all of our remaining time, we'll be using that to gain clints and enjoy the rest of the game. That's going to be happening between the two sandwiched DT battles. So in general, I earn between 60 and 200 clints, depending on the time of day, the format, and the day of the week. Honestly, since I don't live in America, most of my evening playtimes are in the middle of the night, or the middle of the day for the rest of the UR players, making my average clints earned a bit lower than the normal person. So I would say an average of about 100 clints per format is very reasonable, and probably a bit low in reality. So if you play both formats in two different DTs, that'll earn you on average about 400 clints a day for just four matches. The key thing to remember here is that it doesn't matter if you only get one point at the end of the match, because that is all you need to collect the money for playing in the DT. There are only eight minutes left, so I'm gonna try and show you really fast. It doesn't really matter. So I'm doing some missions with Roots and Sacrum right now. It's absolutely horrible deck. Um, you can say this is the same thing as someone who might be a beginner, except you'll see some rares, but it's not really gonna help me out too much. I'm just gonna go ahead and play through this really fast. Remember, we're looking up here. We need to finish two games in this much time. Doesn't matter, I'm trying to gain life, so I'm gonna throw Ramsey out. Maybe I'll get lucky and this person will think I'm going in deep with Ramsey for the seven damage, who knows, probably not. Um, this is a horrible play, probably nothing on Derby Queen is my guess. Yeah, that's okay, doesn't matter. The goal is just to get through the match as fast as you can. So when you log on, you should switch to one of your DT decks. I had mine already logged on, uh, ready when I logged on. Make sure your deck doesn't have any negative modifiers as well. There are certain cards that will give you a penalty in DTs, because you want to be able to earn at least one point, even if you lose all of your rounds. Okay, let's see, we've got Ed CR here, so... I don't know, fudge. 
Why not? So right now, we're trying to get these first ones in. Uh, it's my turn. He didn't lead. I did. Uh, let's make sure I win at least one round. So what do I need? Uh, reprisal. He can't copy that. 7, 49, 12 is 61. Again, not that important if I win or not. But if I win one round, it pretty much guarantees that I'm going to at least get some points. Um, in general, I've earned between 60 and 200 clints, depending on the time of day and the format that I'm in. Sometimes you'll earn a little bit more in T1 format, sometimes you'll earn a little bit more in T2. It depends on who's playing and how many people are playing in each format. Honestly, now since I don't live in America, most of my evening play times are in the middle of the night. Ooh, wow, I might actually win this match too. Anyway, um, most of my play times are in the middle of the night, or the middle of the day, or the middle of the day for the rest of the UR players, making my average clints a bit lower than the normal, I think. Let's go ahead and play this quickly. Don't need to do anything fancy. Did you notice I had 8 minutes? I finished this game in about 3 minutes. So, I say 15 minutes. You don't really need 15 minutes, but it's to give you a little extra wiggle room just in case you get someone who takes a long time to play. Sometimes you will run into players that take a long time to play their cards. Okay, make sure you don't say fight again or you could get yourself in trouble. If you quit a game, if you hit fight again and you quit it, you get minus 20 points, which is pretty much going to guarantee that you get nothing from that. So you're going to have to play another match. So make sure that you don't hit fight again or you're in real trouble. So here I'm going to come up here, um, I'm going to switch to my other one. This is actually not a dedicated DT deck, so this is a bad example. You're going to have to click off. You notice now it's switched to type 2. Go ahead and play it. I've got a couple minuses in this deck, so I may have to play two matches. Really, There's Tan Man, so... That's probably not such a smart idea since he had courage or whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I should have played one more. That was really dumb. Well, I'm playing like a new player, right? That's that's what I'm simulating here. It's not that this is how I normally play. I'm trying to make a video while playing, so I'm gonna make that I'm gonna make that my excuse. I have to go first. Uh. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that he just plays nothing. Probably, ideally, I should have ensured that I won this round, but so be it. Ugh. Well, the good news is, is I still get my last round, and that'll be a win. Now, the later you wait in rounds as well to win, the better, the more points that you gain. So you gain more points for winning later rounds in DTs. So in this case, it's actually a little bit better for me to wait until the end because then that means that I'm gonna get more points for this win because it was in round four instead of in round one. <clears throat> so, you see me do this, we're gonna check and see if I've gotten any points at all. Did I get any points? Okay, good. Looks like I did. So, we're gonna go back to the room. If you're not sure if you've gotten points, you can always go down here, but sometimes this takes some time to refresh. So instead, what you can do is you can look at the game modes up here, tourney, history, and usually it will update this immediately. Okay, so here for type 1, 15 points, 188th place. Type 2, 5 points, 251st place. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. So, I've made sure that I've gotten points in both of them. I'm going to get the rewards. I'll cut to those later so you can see how much I got, just as an example. But it's going to fluctuate depending on the time of day and the number of people who are playing. Alright, so here we are back in my inbox right now, my mailbox. And we're going to be taking a look at all of the daily tournaments that I've been playing. I promised that I would let you see what they are. I've left all of them as unopened uh, up to this point, so you know that I haven't touched them at all. Um, so let's take a look at how many clints that I've gotten for each one of these daily tournaments. As you can see here, I got these uh, just after midnight, and this was yesterday. Uh, so it was on a Saturday night, just after that. Okay, 
I only played one. 74 clints here, so only 74 here. 65 clints. This is really low, but it's because of the time of day for everyone else. It's pretty bad. Okay, so 74, 65. Let's take a look at this other one. These were the same time, except this was one day earlier. So this was on Friday night. Uh, again, 71 clints, 77 clints. So this is not really a great time to do it for me just before bed. You can see there isn't much. This was earlier. This was uh, two hours earlier. So this was just before 8 o'clock my time. 83 clints. You can see it's higher. So there were more people on at that point. Um, here we've got even two hours earlier than that on a uh, Thursday. 133 clints. Okay. And 114 clints. So as you can see earlier is giving me more clints. So even though I had a couple really low ones up here, uh, the earlier in the day that I do it, for me, I get a little more from these. So it's better for me to play them earlier in the day than later in the day. And I have two more here that were a couple days ago that I didn't do here. Results of these tournaments. Um, again, this was even earlier, two hours earlier than that. 116 clints and 147 clints. Um, again, you can see I'm getting two of these per hour because I'm playing one in the T2 format and one in the T1 format. So make sure that you get both of them. And so here, for just one match in both of these, 116 clints, 147 clints. And even here, if you notice this, only 15 battle points. I was 194th when I did this late at night, which meant that if I'd have played one or two more games, I could have also gotten a uh, bronze token from it for getting in the top 150. So you don't have to put in a whole lot of effort in order to get clints to do it this way. So I really recommend having one deck for each that you can use in order to do this and make sure that you find a good time in your evening that is uh, convenient for you because this will make it uh, very, very easy for you to make a good 200 to even 250, as you can see here, clints uh, just for two matches. Next is dual mode. We've got one hour between deets to maximize our UR gains. Well, what should we do? I think the first thing is simple. Go to dual mode. Especially if you're a new player, dual mode is a must. You should use it to try and finish a lot of your missions, or load a dedicated deck and blast through Kate as fast as possible to get to doing other things you might enjoy a little more. The common that you receive is just as good as money with the median card being worth about 350 clints. You could even get lucky and hit one of the commons that's worth over 1k. You've got about a 7-8% to 8 chance of that. But even so, let's assume that you have average luck and stick with an average earning of about 350 clints a day here. 10 matches played well, and especially with a T2 deck, or one with 35-40 to 40 stars, should only take you around 30-35 to 35 minutes to finish off Kate. It may take upwards of your entire hour when you first start, or if you're going after certain very difficult missions. But learning the ins and outs of a dedicated deck will quickly result in faster play against Kate. Longer times to finish missions aren't a problem either. Just try to finish up early a few times a week so that we can fit in just a little bit more to get to our 1k a day. And as long as you are a high enough level, I believe it's a level 15 when it gets unlocked, we're gonna go down here to dual mode. Okay, I know a lot of higher level players are saying, you know, oh well, dual mode just gives bad cards, it doesn't matter. I'm going to release a dual mode uh, video later, so you'll be able to see why it's not a waste. Okay, I've got a pretty bad draw today, so, sorry, just to explain this, dual mode. It says, every day win a character by challenging our AI Kate. Every day a new character is put into play. So every 24 hours, at a specific time, every day, and not 24 hours after you finish it, a new card will appear. The way that you can check on this card is by clicking the plus button here. So you click the plus button and it will show you what to do here. Now it says level 1, don't worry about the level 1. 0 out of 10 victories. Some people have done this before and thought that they only needed to beat Kate once. You need to beat Kate 10 times. You can play Kate as many times as you want to. It's not 10 out of 10, it's just 10 wins until you get 10 wins. After 10 wins, you can't play anymore. Finally, for the core or basics, we're going to look at weekly ELO games. In order to earn our daily clints from ELO, we need to meet two requirements. One, we need to play five matches. And two, we need to have over 1,000 ELO points. So first, this means that you'll need to win at least half your matches, which may be harder for some of you newer players. 
Second, your total points drop slowly every day that you don't play. So playing at least one game a day, or waiting to do your matches until over the weekend on Saturday and Sunday, is very important. The goal for newer players is to keep practicing, because once you can do the two things, five matches and over 1,000 ELO points, you'll be able to earn an additional 400 clints and two credits every week for just playing five matches. That's pretty sweet, right? So playing one match a day is just an additional five to ten minutes, depending on who the player is that you end up going up against and how far along you are in the ELO ranking. Sadly, this means it will only add about 57 clints a day, um, at least until you can hit 1200 ELO, which will take substantially more time and effort to reach, especially for newer players. It's definitely worth it if you're willing to put in the extra time and you want to become a top tier player in the future. As for weekly ELO, that's right in here under the ELO box. Obviously I have not played any for this week, but you start with 1000 points and hopefully you win enough matches to stay above 1000 in order to get those extra clints and credits at the end of the week. So now, we're up to 1,061 clints a day. At least this much is guaranteed. And we still have about 15 minutes left over in our one and a half hour time block. So this doesn't include any missions that you might finish, any extra clints from battles, or free message boards events, or things from your guild that they may have. Spending the last 15 minutes, well, that's up to you to do whatever you want. Spend it as you wish. But here are just a few of my suggestions. Lots of people don't get involved with their guild, at least not really, but you should. Joining a guild increases the amount of clints you can earn per battle, or decreases the amount of taxes that Kate can take on your sales. It can earn you even more bonus clints every day, as I said before. You should give back to your guild by checking the message boards and writing just a small message, at least, here or there, just to let them know that you're still alive. My guild often has message board only events, where all you really have to do is post something to have a chance to win some really cool prizes. Besides, if you love your guild, you're also way more likely to enjoy you are and make lots of friends. Joining a guild increases the amount of clints that you can earn per battle. So if you go up here, let's look at Legends of America. We are a level 30 guild, we're the maximum level that you can reach right now. Guilds offer these bonuses down here. So, this is a daily bonus for battle points awarded. I get more BP, 25% more. XP, I get 25% more XP in fights. I get plus 200% on the size of my XP reserve, which is maybe not that exciting, but it can be really helpful at times. The, dura the duration of time that you have on the market. I get four extra days. We get four extra days in uh, LOA. Also, the amount of Kate's tax goes down when I sell things. So it's 25% lower. Kate usually takes off 5%, that means she only takes off 4%, because 25% a little less than that. But um, basically I say that over a percent on the transactions that I do. Also, when I earn Clint's in battles, I get 10% more daily. That's awesome. Okay, and in addition, a daily XP bonus on my connection. So. I'm gonna gain a little bit more uh, just normal XP whenever I try to level up my own cards. Now if you're gonna earn all of these things from your guild, then the least you can do is give back to your guild a little by checking out the message boards and at least writing maybe a small message here or there just to let them know that you're still alive. So for example, if we go up here, guilds, guild message board, if you look at our message board, we actually have one guy. Uh, He's completely in charge of just looking for um, different events that we can do. The events thread here. Basically, the, this entire events thread, 126 messages. Incubus LOA is great. He just made admin, and he goes through all of the different events that are going on in UR, and he posts them here whenever there's a free one or something that we can do. That's really awesome because then I don't have to do as much about that. There may be someone in a guild that's willing to do that as well. Or if you're already in a guild, you should appoint someone to do this because it's really helpful and a really great way to help people in your guild get more out of the game. So, another guy in our guild, Sword AVG. He had a reverse birthday party where basically he gave cards to us on his birthday. 
Things like this, little things in here during your 15 minutes, checking out the message boards, giving back to your guild, a really great way to kind of help them out for what they're giving you in a bonus in order to do this. Another thing you can do is check the events page. Lots of people have free lotteries and they make more and more every single day. Spend your time looking for free lotteries that you can join. You never know, you could win and many of them are free. To check the events page, you can go up here to community and right under public presets is the events page. Very simple, you can just look down the right side here. There'll be a little X if you cannot enter the event. But if you can enter the event, there will be a little green check mark. Another thing you can do is resell PFULS. If you really like the market and you want to become a market guru, this is perfect. Look for P-full cards or pre-full cards, cards that are not at full experience. Specifically, look for cards that are leaders or common four to five star cards. These are often sold at the same price as cards that are in full experience form, but that is ridiculous. Buy them up and resell them for a small profit. Just make sure that you're making a profit. Kate always takes 5% from your sale, so make sure that you're making more than a 5% profit. The easiest way is to check for 10% profit, and anyone can do that. Just look at the decimal point and move it one to the left. See if the difference between the price you'll buy and the price you sell is bigger than that. If so, buy it and resell it. It should only take one or two of that kind of find in order to make 50 or more clints, or even up to 200 or more, depending on what card you're able to find for the day. Look for P-full cards that are being undersold and resell them for a minor profit. Now, P-full means pre-full. Most people think it means something like a zero XP card, like what you see here with Asparov, but really it just means anything that isn't completely full. If we look at leaders cards, for example, so let's click on leaders, so it pulls it down. Here we have Hugo here. If you notice, here with Hugo, there's all full max. Whereas here with Bridget, they're not all max. If we scroll down a little here on Hugo, still all max. This is normal. So cards that are at max should sell for less than cards that are pre-full. So let's take a look at all of the cards here for Hugo. Now notice there are a couple in here for 1200 and then a lot more here starting at 1600 or higher. If you wanted to, you could buy these two for 1200 and try to sell them for 1599. Okay. Now, one problem with this is that it's not completely obvious what the pre-full price should be. Sometimes you get into a situation like this and the pre-full price should probably Maybe it should be around 1200 instead of 1600 So you could try selling it here though. Anyway, buy them up and resell them for a small profit. Remember that Kate will take 5 cent from your sale though, so make sure that you're making more than 5% profit. So here, if you take this, 1200 clints, sell it for 1600 that's going to be a 400 clints profit. But what is the amount going to be taken away by Kate here? Well, 10% would be 120, so 5% is going to be 60. So as long as it's more than 60 clints that you're making, you're fine. You're definitely making more than 60. You could be making about 400, so you don't have to worry about that. Just don't buy them when they're too close. Otherwise, you won't actually be making a profit. Okay? So buying it and reselling it, one or two of these kind of finds to make 50 or more clints would be really great every day. So just buying these two, resell them. If you sell them within a day, you've already made a bunch more clints, 300 clints for each one. You can do this with a lot of them. Leaders are very common and four and five star common cards. Another great use of your time is finishing both character and LD missions. Lots of character missions can reward you with credits or clints for finishing them. And each finish mission also gets you missions points which some guilds accept as a requirement to join them. For example, my guild, Legends of America. So, you can spend your time in tourney doing during an off hour and grind missions or stay extra in duel and grind them there against Kate. In tourney, though, you'll also earn a few clints per battle too. 
Finishing the LD missions will also allow you to earn an additional card, which is really helpful for you newer players. For each one of the clans. Not all of the LDs are game-breaking, but they are quite good cards, and they're definitely cards you should be looking to have in your collection to help you jump into the game and have a slightly stronger deck, until you can afford some of those more pricey rare cards. What's another thing you can do? Well, you can also finish missions, okay? Lots of character missions will reward you with credits or clints for finishing them. Each finished mission also will get you missions points, which some guilds will accept as a requirement to let you join them, like my guild, Legends of America. So, you can go into tourney during an off hour and grind missions, or stay extra in dual mode and grind them there. Um, also, in tourney though, you'll be able to earn a few clints per battle as well. So if you notice, lots of missions in here that you can try and do if you bought some Fang Pai Clang cards. You could come in here and try to do some things, say, you know, uh, let's say you try to get your 50 KOs with Kinjo. I got 150 clints just for that. Um, it does take a while. It does take a while, and some people think that the clints amounts aren't worth it, but it gives you something to do, and you can try and get missions points, which you can then compare to other people in your guild. As you can see right now, I'm ninth in my guild. Um, so... It's just another thing that you can do if you're interested in trying to find another way to find something that you really like about UR that'll keep you coming back day after day. Finally, earn free credits. Now, I live in Japan, so I can't do a lot of these. But, for example, there are many commercials that you can watch that will give you extra credits, and eventually you can trade those in for packs. Or, you could do some of the surveys in the free credit area or sign up for free products and do all kinds of other crazy things, assuming you're old enough and you have parental consent. Okay, now these kinds of things generally drive me insane, so I don't do them. But I know that some people really don't mind doing it, and it's free credits, which then turn into packs, which turn into new cards, or more clints. Okay, usually here on the Urban Rivals main page, they've had something in here that you can do to uh, earn free credits or watch videos. The problem is is that I'm from America, but I live in Japan now, so I can't actually watch any videos. Um, they used to give free credits for videos. I don't think they do anymore, or if they do, I don't know, because I, I've just been out of the loop for so long. Um, you can usually do this to eventually get enough in order to buy packs if you want, uh, if you get enough credits. So. Through following these simple, easy steps, you can definitely make 1k a day on average. Suddenly, 60k cards like Grax, or at least what he was before his RB came out, shouldn't seem quite so far away if you're a newer player. While two months is still kind of a long time, since it'll take you 60 days, honestly, within two months, buying a card like Grax is still pretty fast. And two months isn't that long to obtain such an amazing card as Grax. After all, he is one of the top tier cards in the entire game. He's not just good, he is great. And especially knowing that you don't need to spend a single cent to do it by buying credits or completing some kind of impossible mission, it's literally just a matter of time. And not even that much time. Good draws on your daily reward cards or chests getting higher than average DT rewards, or drawing better cards from your daily duel, could all speed things up substantially too. Nothing in UR is outside of your reach if you just do a few of the things that you may have once considered bothersome before. Just do them a little more efficiently and regularly. This concludes my episode on 1K a day. I hope it was helpful and encouraging, especially for you newer players. If you liked this video, then feel free to like it, favorite it, and share it. And don't forget to leave a comment below if there's anything you think I forgot. And while you're there, let me know what you do to make Clint's in UR. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for more of my Urban Rivals videos. This is Zonia, and you've been in the zone.